All right, next is Civic Rods. And as you can tell, the timer is, uh, <coughs> brutal. he's brutal. <laughs> we put the palace first. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> All right, so speaking of who represents me. So I want you all to start by, by thinking of something for me. So I want you to remember a time when an elected official, so someone who supposedly represents you, did something or voted for something that you strongly disagreed with, and you thought, this makes me angry, and I need to do something about this. So this, you may not have to dig deep to find that. <laughs> but if you do, think of a time when uh, an elected official did something you strongly agreed with, and you thought, this person needs a pat on the back, I need to let them know how I feel. So you've got this moment in your head. Now, be honest with yourself. Did you actually do something? Did you act on that impulse to contact a legislator to stand up on that issue? Now this is a room full of above average people, but if national odds held, one in 100 people will have taken action. One in 100. And this is an issue for these organizations, issue advocacy nonprofits with a mission to mobilize uh, in support of a political, social, or environmental cause. And a crucial piece of their strategy is mobilizing the millions of Americans who care passionately about that cause, but need guidance to take action. And the tools that they use, email and social media, are increasingly ineffective in reaching that audience, particularly younger generations. These organizations are eager for a new tool that will help them more efficiently and effectively uh, attract, mobilize, and retain millennial supporters. They are eager for civic rights. So what is Civic Rise? Well, Civic Rise can be thought of as the Fitbit of civic engagement. And to help explain what that means, I'll walk you through our smartphone app that individuals download and use to subscribe to causes they care about. Through the app, they receive calls to action, including context on why this action and why now. Actions can be to contact a legislator, to post on Facebook, to register for an event. They easily complete the action through the app, report back on their success. They track their progress over time, receive incentives for taking action, share that with friends, and build an online social community of fellow informed and active citizens. So right now, these organizations are able to mobilize action at a rate of about 1.8%. But in our early trials of civic rights, we're mobilizing action at 15%, which is eight times better than our partner's current best alternative. And so Civic Rise is clearly serving a social mission of increasing, of increasing citizen engagement, but we're also structured as a for-profit venture. The, our target customers of issue advocacy organizations represent a $26 billion industry, and they're nonprofits, but they invest in technology that helps them scale and achieve their cause. And about 10% of that technology spend is on communications tools, and it's this $90 million market segment that we seek, seek initially to address. But that's step one, because with a growing, informed, and active user base, we're looking ahead at the 2018 and 2020 elections as key opportunities for further growth. So open data. So Civic Rise is built on two categories of open data. The first is legislator info. So this we're uh, pulling from the Google Civic Information API, which catalogs all uh, contact for information for legislators across the country. The user on Civic Rise inputs their address and we're able to match them with their representative from president down to city council and only deliver actionable and relevant information to them. Second category is state and local elections data. So this is some of the data that Laura was just talking about. Uh, who's registered to vote, how many elections they voted in, how likely they are to vote. This is crucial information to these customers, these organizations who want to mobilize these people and ultimately get them to vote. My name is Tim. I'm a co-founder, a recent graduate of Duke's MBA program with 10 years experience in the nonprofit sector, including working with and for our target customers. My partner, Tobias McNulty, is a software developer uh, previously co-founded and managed a successful web app development shop here in the Triangle. We uh, founded Civic Rise with the goal of mobilizing one million actions in our first year. So this is a lofty goal and we have a lot of work to get there and we're going to need help to achieve that goal. So I'm going to close today with the question that we put to our users every day. And that question is, are you ready to take action? Thank you. Quick questions, hopefully. Uh, you alluded to a pilot where you had done something and showed a 1.5 to 15% differential. Yeah. What, I'm just curious, how many people were involved? How long was that? What, what was the issues that they were active on? Or? Yeah, we've got about 500 people on the platform now, um, about five active organizations. Okay. And so that 15% is the rolling average of the past month. Uh, and our partners are folks like Planned Parenthood and uh, the League of Conservation Voters, League of Women Voters, who are sending actions to their supporters through the app. 
Okay. And is there anything on the representative side that you're doing to help them aggregate the flow of data that's coming at them? The act, the, what they're receiving? Yes. Not yet. Okay. No, that would be step three. Okay. Good. Thank you. Go ahead. So are there other key ways you're trying to differentiate yourself from the other competitors in the space? Because I know of a few, just off the top of my head, that are doing similar things. Yeah, there's a couple of other folks who have sprung up in the past few months. There's uh, an app called Capital Call, there's Five Calls, uh, there's Countable, which does sort of bill tracking. Uh, and so we've learned about these as we've been developing as well. Uh, the key differential that we have is that we're actually working actively with uh, the issue advocacy organizations. We're not just scraping data from their websites, we're partnering with them to create and send actions that are specifically relevant to a handheld device. So we're not sending things that involve writing a letter to the editor and getting that on your phone. We're doing phone-based actions and working in partnership with them to explore this new technology. So you're partnering with organizations. Is there a way for the candidates or legislators to participate in the application process as well? Maybe direct engage with users? Is there any functionality related to that at all? Yeah, I think, well, I think so. I hope so. So for candidates, that's sort of uh, what we're looking at uh, for the 2018 election, where candidates could use this. Uh, if we already have a user base of people who are likely to vote, candidates can come online and track those users and then mobilize them themselves into taking action on behalf of their campaign. Uh, and then current elected officials, we're still trying to figure out what, how that relationship work, can work. And right now, it's very much one-way communication, and building out that two-way communication would be a critical differentiator as well. Are you also looking at opening your results to to the community, so people who are actually engaging, what are their demographics and that kind of thing? Like who the folks on the platform are? No, 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 like if, if I go and I engage, my statistics should be rolled up so that so everyone in the community can see who's actually engaging on what. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're definitely exploring that. There's some privacy issues there, that not everybody wants the actions that they take to be public, but if we can have that be an opt-in or an opt-out scenario, then we can see gamified aspects where there's a leaderboard, where there's uh, challenges about who can take action during a certain time period. Because uh, I think that social validation, that being able to see who's active and sort of measure yourself against them is a critical part of building sustained engagement in something like this. So you mentioned that you're a for-profit entity. Where exactly is the monetization coming in? So the partners, we haven't charged them yet, but the, what we're validating is that they'll pay a monthly subscription fee for use of the platform. So they're already paying for uh, email marketing software and maybe uh, a text platform or something like that. And so we're hoping to take some of that work that they're doing there, divert it into the and their revenue. Do they have an interest in keeping some of that data private? They, uh, yes. So they would prefer other organizations not to have immediate access to their contact lists and their uh, results. Uh, so there is a certain amount of siloing of data that happens within that, and organizations can only see what's directly relevant to them. But I think to Alex's point, some of us, we, we would like to know how many other people uh, you know, ran senator so-and-so's cell 